Well, let's talk about a sad topic, extinction. Yep. How did the dinosaurs go extinct? Mostly, probably pretty quickly, but it really is the answer that I think most people are now probably familiar with, which is it's an asteroid impact or a, some kind of extraterrestrial body hit just off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico about 66 million years ago that basically atomized the asteroid, but also importantly, the bit of the ground it hit or below the seabed that it hit was basically the worst kind of rock. And so it put up this enormous ash cloud and basically you have a nearly instantaneous nuclear winter. I mean, immediate devastation, you know, any anything immediately next to it is obviously just like vaporized uh but you know this is the sort of thing that it's like hot enough to set fire to the atmosphere i think the one i read was it's something like a piece of rock about the size of mount everest traveling at something like 10 times the speed of sound so just the momentum between that speed and mass thing is just you know beyond extraordinary but i think what does a lot of damage is the change in the climate yeah and so so every there are five recognized mass extinctions in the history of life on Earth, and all of them are ultimately some form of climate change, um, whether it's volcanic eruptions or hyperoxygenation or an ice age or whatever. It's 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 climate changing too quickly for things to adapt to, and that starts, you know, that just cripples entire populations and entire species. And then, if you do enough damage to enough things, you start getting ecosystem collapse you know that this moth has died out well it turns out that moth is the primary pollinator of this tree well that tree produced nuts and that was the entire winter survival store for this squirrel well that squirrel was the main food of this cat and now suddenly the moth going has killed four other things and and everything that's attached to that um and so that that's really what did for them and sadly the big things well everything dies but the big things have a lot of trouble recovering yeah so i mean this this is you know a, a classic example so oh well you know what is paleontology good for well one actually really is extinction which is very relevant right now in that we have a very good handle on when you have extreme climate stress what tends to suffer more and what tends to suffer less and as we say big big things fundamentally do they require more resources they require more area of land you need to roam further, which means, you know, if you're a mouse and you happen to have a little bit of land and that bit doesn't get hit, you're fine. Whereas if you're an elephant and you need all of this land and even a chunk of it goes wrong, well, that's probably maybe not enough for you to survive anymore. So, yeah, big things suffer disproportionately badly from these things. And mostly as well, we think um, terrestrial things generally do worse than things in water because water is a great equilibrating medium. You know, it takes ages to heat up. It takes ages to cool down. Um, yes, if you live in specific coastal conditions or something, maybe you can't travel that easily. But, you know, whales can go from pole to pole quite happily and plenty of other fish do too. So if it's too hot or too cold or too nasty here, you can just swim somewhere else. Whereas if you're an animal and you hit a desert or you hit a mountain range or you hit a river, you stop moving and you're trapped and and then you die. So dinosaurs were, yeah, the, the worst possible combination. They were mostly big and they were mostly on land. And yeah, it's not really surprising they did very badly out of it. And then some species did survive. Uh, I guess I think you said that it's it's very possible that some dinosaurs even survived for a time oh, that we, we might be able to discover down the line. I'd be amazed if they didn't. I mean, there's been various reports over the decades of the, the KPG or KT extinction, the Cretaceous Paleogene or Cretaceous Tertiary extinction of, of dinosaurs surviving, and none of them have held up. It's usually been um bioturbation so literally things like prairie dogs digging and of course they'll dig a tooth up and then move it through the layers or things like this or plant roots can can move stuff um or just soils can get churned up but i would be shocked if they didn't not not like oh yeah the dinosaur survived and the Loch Ness monster and stuff like that but but, but like Yes, it was a global devastation. Yes, it's what ultimately killed the dinosaurs. But I'd be amazed if there wasn't some equivalent of Hawaii or New Zealand or some other tucked away island or valley where actually dinosaurs were fine for 
anything from a few hundred thousand to a couple of million years. But on a global scale, it's a dot on a map. And the odds that we'll ever uncover any rocks, fossiliferous rocks of that age that we then have access to, that we then find a dinosaur in, that we can then date properly, I think is almost non-existent. But it would just be weird if they didn't survive somewhere for a bit, or even quite a few of them in places. It's a small local population. We see it all the time. You know, the lemurs in Madagascar, all the stuff in New Zealand. There's tons of weird archaic stuff hanging around in Hawaii. You know, Galapagos finches and tortoises, or the tortoises that you don't see anywhere else. In Australia with the marsupials, they're almost, and then the monotremes are almost unknown outside of there. This, this is pretty normal bit of biology for animals that were so dominant globally we know there were patches that were largely unchanged otherwise we wouldn't have had the mammals surviving and the crocodiles surviving and the birds surviving and every and newts and frogs and everything that did survive i'm sure a few of those patches had some dinosaurs in them but it, it is ultimately what killed them what do you think is the chance that they would have survived so you take some local populations and they flourish it's happened look at look at australia um you know, the, the marsupials have done pretty well there um, for a very long time. You can imagine if the next mass extinction, you know, flattens a large chunk of Indonesia, for example, kangaroos could island hop pretty easily, and make it to mainland Asia. But then, I mean, to then lead, you take the dinosaurs a small fraction survives, and then they eventually repopulate the Earth again. I mean, that's extraordinarily unlikely, because once your population's been crashed like that, you do have the problems of things like inbreeding, or maybe you're a great specialist to a certain area, or you're surviving because you're isolated, you're in a, you're in a valley or you're on an island, and then dispersing again becomes really, or breaking out into those areas becomes much, much harder. So like the great predators, like a, even though the T-Rex is such a great predator, that doesn't that doesn't give you yeah because because you've still had the extinction event and the environment is no longer what it was that you evolved into yeah. um, and when once those systems start to recover those other animals are going to adapt much better to them how does that make you feel that that um this stupid asteroid from nowhere <laughs> I mean, at one level, I probably wouldn't be here if it hadn't. So, I mean, that's that's an interesting question. I mean, do you think um, there's several ways of asking that question? But if dinosaurs didn't go extinct, do you think humans would still be able to evolve? I mean, my guess is probably not. I don't, I don't think. I don't think it's quite the. Um, what, what was it? Oh, Simon Conway Morris had that book. Was it Inevitability of Man? That like, even if you rewound it, everything would come back. I'm. I'm not. I don't think it's that far. Um, I certainly don't think it's um, anything like, quite like the butterfly effect of, you know, if one mammal had been trodden on by one T-Rex, then humans would never have evolved either. We should say that the uh, ancestor of the primates, or the closest, there's a lot of debate around this, uh, it's a kind of tiny creature, Purgatorius, that was our ancestor. Yeah, so this is us. This is what we evolved from. Yes, uh, Scandentia. I think it's the group. Basically a rodent. Yeah, I mean, there, there were probably primates around in the Cretaceous. Some of the molecular clock stuff suggests that primates were around alongside the dinosaurs, that we've never found um, any osteological evidence of that. But yeah, the, 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 there's been a backwards and forwards about were dinosaurs already on their way out or were they a bit limited by the very end Cretaceous? I think the more recent analyses have shown that's probably not the case. So in other words, they were basically doing fine um, right up to the extinction event. And so, yeah, if the asteroid hadn't hit, there's no reason to think that they were on some kind of terminal decline. Something else may have hit. There may have been, um, you know, some other environmental disaster or something may have happened, or maybe they're more vulnerable to stuff. Um Th than we know of, but there's no, I don't think there's any really good reason to think they wouldn't have carried on relatively well. I mean, even post dinosaur extinction, you had a window where the mammals and the birds were pretty competing. There was a lot of big birds getting going and various big carnivorous terrestrial 
kind of hyper predatory ostrich like things like the fossoracids. Um, so there's no guarantee that mammals would have even taken over post the dinosaur extinction, um, since initially they were in a bit of a uh, a fair bit of competition. So this is just going to, based on current scientific understanding, human evolution would be highly improbable if dinosaurs hadn't gone extinct 66 million years ago because dinosaurs dominated ecological niches. For everything, basically. Like I mean, body that's the mammals. thing. You, you, you look through, yeah, the Mesozoic, the late Triassic dinosaurs are there alongside a whole bunch of other big and unusual and interesting reptiles and, and some other early pre-mammal-like things that are closer to mammals than, than the reptiles. But once you've gone into the Jurassic, you've now got a solid like 120, 130 million years where almost anywhere on Earth, if you saw an animal bigger than like a raccoon, it was probably a dinosaur. That's how incredibly dominant, they, you know, as dominant, if not more dominant than modern mammals. But is it fair to say that they were mostly dumb? I don't think so, because I think I think that comes down to a that bit of kind of classic, almost Victorian speciesisms, and you get these insane hypotheses like dinosaurs as a species or as a lineage became senile, so they forgot to breed. That was literally a suggested idea. Uh, you know, the mammals ate their eggs and all of this kind of stuff. You know, dinosaurs only lived alongside mammals for a hundred million years. It'd be weird if they all went extinct at the same time because suddenly egg eating evolved. Um, you know, you, you've got problems like this. Um, but also, again, that that general speciesism, which you know even goes back to stuff like Linnaeus and his taxonomic ranks, and even arguably stuff like Aristotle. You've got like you know humans are superior in some way. And we're superior to the other mammals. And of course, mammals are closest to us, so they must be quite good. And then they've got to be better than lizards. And then lizards have to be better than frogs. And frogs have to be better than fish. So th that, that gets you into the, well, reptiles must be stupid. And, and they're not. <laughs> I, w I wonder if a human intelligence level organism could have evolved from the dinosaurs. I mean, it's that's been hypothesized plenty of times. Dale Russell, a Canadian paleontologist, the famous guy who came up with this human-like truodontid that was done for a um, TV documentary. I think the one that Christopher Reeve narrated, that I think is a remake, but I've seen the original that Dale had made for his TV show, and it's still... Uh, it's sitting in the collections of the National Museum of Nature in, in Ottawa for Canada. It's really, really cool. It's like this five foot tall dinosauroid. That was it there on the screen. Model of the hypothetical dinosauroid and display at the Dinosaur Museum in Dorchester. Oh, Dorchester, Dorchester. that's in England. Yeah, I knew there was a couple of copies of it. Trudon always comes back as like the most intelligent dinosaur because it has really quite a big brain for its size. It does have a high encephalization quotient, so it's always been like tagged as like a very good candidate for being the smartest dinosaur. And basically he just hybridized that with a human. But of course, why would these things end up as like plantigrade quadrupeds? And why would they go back to five fingers? And actually, I think he's only got three to be fair, but he's got very human-like feet. Why has it got no tail? Why would those things suddenly disappear? There's no real reason other than just kind of human exceptionalism. But like, I mean, you could argue some parrots, some crows are phenomenally intelligent and show extremely clever behaviors on a par with apes. So at some level, some dinosaurs were extremely intelligent. I mean, yeah, this is a whole other conversation, but all the tiny details that lead to the explosion that is in the our evolutionary tree that is Homo sapiens. Like, what is it? Opposable thumbs, right? <laughs> is it the invention of fire and the meat eating? Is it? Yeah, is it some and other and sociality and so many predation pressure and then the changing in changing environment. I mean, the shrinking of the forest, pushing apes out of the trees into the environment or into into the open environment. And probably the same kind of story could be told about the dinosaurs or about about anything really yeah i mean you, no you i mean if you have 160 million years and a global domination that, i mean this is the thing you talked about like lost behaviors but like the lost lineages i wrote about this in one of my books and like you, you want to find you want a weird animal you go to a volcanic island like you go to new zealand you go to hawaii you go to the galapagos and yet those are the places that basically don't really form fossils so you think the dinosaurs we know about are strange what was the stuff knocking around there? We're never going to know, sadly, but 
for everything you think weird, you know, you think birds are cool. Think about penguins compared to your average bird. Mm -hmm. They live on an ice shelf for six months of the year and can't fly and massively modified skeletons. And, you know, you're, you, compared to your average bird, penguins are unbelievably weird. So, yeah, take an average dinosaur and take it to, like, penguin level or ostrich level evil or hummingbird level evolution there's going to be weirder stuff out there than we found much weirder if you travel back in time you probably your mind will be probably blown by the weirdness yeah, yeah. because those things are almost always in small isolated places that don't preserve fossils very well and so the odds of us ever coming across them i mean you you see it to a degree so you've got um the stuff that comes out of uh, like what is modern Trans Transylvania, uh, Hatzeg, that that's that was a series of islands in the Mediterranean at the end of the Cretaceous, and some of the weirdest dinosaurs are from that chain of islands, and that's not very isolated compared to again something like Hawaii or New Zealand, but it's fitting the exact pattern. You you get dinosaurs on islands, they turn weird. Um, we we see that. So again, dinosaurs were real animals. Like again, sounds sounds really painfully obvious, but they they weren't monsters. They followed the same rules. Might be pushing it, but certain like guidelines. Like ecology operates in certain ways. If you're bigger, you need more food, but you're more efficient. You just are. That's pretty much just physics and scaling. So big dinosaurs are going to follow the rules of bigger animals, and small dinosaurs are going to follow the, follow the rules of smaller animals. They just will quite how they violate it in certain ways by having unusually long necks or unusual physiology or eating an unusual diet or because there was a weird plant that was alive then that isn't now or whatever it may be that there's obviously a huge amount of variation and uncertainty but fundamentally we know what makes animals and ecosystems work and dinosaurs are animals in ecosystems they're not that strange at some level and therefore reconstructing their actual biology is challenging, but far from impossible.